Genesis 1, we're going to start from verse 26, where man first showed up. Then God said, let us make man, New King James Version is where I'm reading from, in our image, <laughs> according to our likeness, let them have dominion. Amen. Amen. You've been in Latter House. I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again for those who are just hearing for the first time. When you see the word man in Genesis chapter 1, he's not talking about a, uh, a singular man. He's talking about a plural man. Let us make man in our image. Then he says, semicolon, let them have dominion. So it tells you that the man he's talking about is more than one. He said them. Are we together? But then he said, let them have dominion over what? How are you going to reign in life reading this thing? Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over all the cattle. Hallelujah. Over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he did what? He created them. Praise God. So when God sat down in his plural self as Elohim, because Elohim is the name of God that says he's more than one. Let us make man in our image as Elohim. What's the image of God? Spirit. God is a spirit. So he made man as a spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He made man as a spirit. And then he said, let this man also be in our likeness. What's the likeness of God? God is more than one. So man is more than one. Then he said, when we make them after our likeness, let them have dominion. And then he told man what he should have dominion over. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's call out what he wants man to have dominion over. So when God says you are going to reign, can we start from Genesis? What are you reigning over? <laughs> Number one. You not know the Bible. Number one. Fish. Fish. That's why you can bring them out of the water. Create a pool, put them behind your house. Cage them. They will remain there. They won't come out. They are obeying the law of their maker. That you have a right to have dominion over them. Hallelujah. Amen. But do you know what? The man helping you to take care of the fish. You don't have dominion over that man. You don't have dominion over your house help or whatever you call the person in your house. You only have dominion over what the person is taking care of. Over the birds of the air, they are in the air, but you can catch them, you can catch them. It's only worry that didn't allow all the pigeons to fly. <laughs> How we, even the pigeons, that the, the pigeons, they vexed this high cage when he became president first time. They opened the cage, come out, they say we are not coming out. Animals know demon possess people when they see them. Pastor, that one is not inside the Bible. It's inside the Bible. The Bible said God went to the man who was by the road of Ganaseret. Possessed of demons and devils. How many are you? We are many. Please, sir, help us enter into these pigs. We don't want to come out and roam around the desert because it's not yet our time for punishment and cage. He said, oh, yeah, come out. They went and entered into the pigs. Pigs, Kuma told themselves, 
We are not to cohabit with demons. I would rather die than keep a demon. They entered water. Why is a devil bothering you? And you are saying, you are speaking slangs. Leave me alone, you devil. <laughs> they never slap you. <laughs> if your demons are from Otupo. Abutu. <laughs> shaka, shaka. You will look for the pages of your life. Turn <laughs> the <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. The pigs say we don't want. Somebody will come and tell me, I, I feel as if I'm possessed. You have a right. These pigs were not born again. Casting out devils is not only for born again. The disciples were not born again. God deliver you from religion. They were not born again when Jesus sent them. He said, go out, cast out the, de the devils, heal the sick, raise the dead. How do you say they were not born again? Because there was no shedding of blood. That is the reason why witches and wizards can remove one witch and send another witch. That's why they have spiritual power. Spiritual power is not only for born again. It's for anybody that knows how to navigate that realm. That's true. So you reign in life when you know Zabada. a witch will sit in one street and decide nobody will change house. She is not filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not used in the church. He is dormant. We have kept him. We have refused to allow him to work. Because we have everything that we want done as we want in the service. Somebody is hit by the power of God. He's lying down. But it's time to close. You go and wake the person up from Holy Ghost. Go back to your seat. <laughs> Latter House, before me, by the power of God, we are moving out of this place. <laughs> then you can lie down on that altar. There is no ocean service anybody that will come and slap you and say, get up. You have personal all night where you alone will come. You have arrived in certain realms in the spirit when you don't need church to call you for all night. Yes, Amen. Amen. Let this man have dominion. And the reason man is not having dominion is because man is seeking to have dominion over another man. Bobby, when God says, have dominion over fish, and you want to have dominion over Stephanie, he won't give you that power. Do you know what you have? You have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is God's power inside you. But the authority to make things happen is inside your mouth. I remember saying it. God is present everywhere, but he's not active everywhere. You have to activate him. Go to a beer parlor. They are having drinks. They are even sleeping with one another if they want. Enter there as a child of God. And say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Demons will manifest. There are certain things they have told you. That by this series you will be delivered. Amen. They have told you to go to the hospital and pray for the sick. No. You are sent to the hospital to heal the sick. You don't go to the hospital to pray. You go to the hospital to talk. To the disease. When Jesus saw that this fig tree was not giving him what he wanted, he didn't go and pray. He spoke to the fig tree. There are others. When you say it's Jesus, say it's Jesus. Did you think that Joshua went to ask God, excuse me, Father, can I ask the son not to move? No Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. He saw that if this son goes down, 
Israel will lose the battle because we don't know how to fight in the night. So he looked at the sun and said, stand there. When you know your place in God, you will talk, God will follow. Hey, Pastor, this thing you are saying is spiritually wrong. Keep coming now. Let's understand. Woman of God, did you hear any time that Elijah had conference with God to say, can we go up the mountain with the prophets of Baal? Which is in front of your house. Don't go and say, Father, what should I do? He has told you. Yes. When you go, don't tell the witches. Father, drive them. He won't drive them. He won't. He won't. You. Amen. Amen. You will drive them. Why? Because of this statement. You have dominion here on earth. Over what? Fish, cattle, birds in the air. So whoever is flying in the air, if you are a witch and you climb a broom, you are now a bird. <laughs> Elbow your neighbor, say, what do you climb at night? Ask your neighbor. You need to know who is sitting next to you. What are you climbing at night? <laughs> Is it a broom? Do you know that witches have graduated? They, get, they don't climb broom again. No. They climb people. You wake up in the morning tired. Demons rode you to Australia. And Australia will not give you a physical visa. They climb your back. <laughs> because you know tomorrow is, is service all you are bothered about is is my wig intact is my hair in place don't worry when you keep your wig and your hair they will climb to your head at night they will ride you <laughs> one of my friends she is coming I trust God this year she will be able to reach this country 20 no 18 years she lived inside the river she will come, you, will, you know there are testimonies I've told. Well, is it not the same thing this woman of God was talking about, the coming of uh, of uh, There are people who, when we say them and God, they understand themselves and God. She, she served Satan until she could no longer live on earth. She moved into Lake Victoria and lived inside it for 18 years. And she sent a spirit to possess her body and be walking around the earth and was working with World Health Organization. While under the ground, they were telling the World Health Organization up in, up in the earth what drug to put. They will open you up to one drug that addicts you to another drug that addicts you to another and destroys your body. <laughs> right there, she was telling me, she said all the companies, what she cannot say on YouTube, they have their names there. Pfizer, Novartis, they have their names there. Their offices, their demons in laboratories, cooking out the sicknesses and cooking out the vaccine. All of them to end, to end this human body. Do you understand? And she said, when she wants to travel sometimes, just for the fun of it. She will just look at it. people inside her house that are shouting too much. At night when they are sleeping, she will just go and climb their back and kick, bam, they will start kukutum, kukutum, kukutum. <laughs> they will start going. Arrive in the places where she wants. When she got tired of that one, she will now teleport. But you know this thing started when she was three years old. At, eight, at 12 years old, in secondary school, one day one of her teachers beat her, this ruler, bring her hand back, back. In the night, she came to the person's house. Spirits don't respect your padlock. Your security man is of no use to demons. <laughs> he, she entered into the house and beat the teacher. 
Teacher woke up in the morning, came to school with swollen eyes, swollen everything. What happened? Say, I don't know. Say, did you beat that girl? Say, yes. Nobody beats that girl. Anybody that beats the girl, this is what happens to that person. My question to you, like I told one of our branch pastors, he said, Mommy, every night I'm sleeping. I had a dream. Demons were pressing me. I said, yes, I sent you to go and do church. I didn't send you to sleep. That's why the demons can come and press you. Because you have broken the rule. What are you doing sleeping that demons will come and say? He said, is these demons in bed me? <laughs> because you don't even know what authority you have. You are a mother and you see your child stooling and vomiting. The first thought in your mind is hospital. Because you don't see stooling and vomiting taking its root from demons. You don't see your authority over even the natural man. You speak to it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> But you know one day now, you carried us to one place. <laughs> Go to 27. Keep in mind that over anything that creeps on the earth, any creep, according to Bill Winston, any creep, you have power over that creep. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Then what did he do? Male and female created it then. We're reading all the way to verse 31. I want you to see something. Then God blessed them. And now said to them. Not to himself as Elohim. But to them. Be fruitful. You see, when you see these two scriptures. When Elohim was speaking. He said, let's make man in our image, after our likeness, let them have dominion. But when man was created, he now said to man, be fruitful, multiply. So now, man is the one that has the authority to, on this earth, multiply. And other things that were created. So what do you think the world is trying to do? The world is trying to stop man from multiplying by saying a man can marry a man, a woman can marry a woman, but will create the children inside one small incubator in the something of laboratory. Just to put down what God has said. He said, fill the earth and do what? Subdue it. <laughs> oh Lord. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth, confirming what he said before. And God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you, what will happen? It shall be for food. Also, to every beast of the earth, amen, to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life. I have given every green herb for food. And what happened? It was so. 31. We're going somewhere with this. Then God saw everything he made. What was there about it? It was very good. So the evening and the morning were, give me Genesis 2, 19 to 25. Give me Genesis 2, 19 to 25. I want you to see something here also. We are going to reign in life. Okay, six people said amen. Let me say it again. We are, you know, you don't... <laughs> Do you know the power of saying amen? I said we are going to reign in life. Yeah. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field. See this. And every bird of the air. 
and brought them to Adam to see what he will call them and whatever Adam called each living creature that was its name why didn't God have it in mind I will change this thing if he names anything I don't like because the authority on the earth is given to man when God gives you authority even him doesn't interfere with it Listen, you have authority over nature. You have authority over water. Flood is coming near your house. You can stop it. I wanted to bring you videos for you to see. You heard what happened, what God did in Meduguri. Shook the ground and collapsed tunnels when they were coming out to kill Christians. Before Boko Haram broke. I called for prayer. I can only tell you my own story. I don't know the one of other churches and I don't take credit for it. I'm only telling you what happened. God said to me, they are cooking up something in this land. If it is allowed to mature and it explodes, it will bring down Christians in one day in this nation. So he said, call for prayer. My trouser wearing people in Elion, the ones with purple hair, with long, long nails like my own, were the ones who heard God and we came to pray. We prayed for several days and then he said, now break it on a Friday and have a feast. And we cooked from home and brought the food. And we had one of our members who is a doctor. That day, we began to pray, Father, Whatever their plan is and whoever they are, let their plan explode in their faces. God gave us the prayer point. He said, pray it. So we began to announce it. Let the plan explode in their faces. I stood in front of them. I said, announce it. Let the plan. We don't know where the plan is. We don't know who they are. We don't know where they are. But God said they exist. So let the plan explode in their faces. We closed on Friday. Saturday, Haruna called me. He said, mom, something is happening. I said, what is it? He said, I'm in the hospital. They brought a pickup load of people, limbs missing. But we noticed that they all have turbans. We said, where are they coming from? We now found out that they were making bombs inside one room. The bombs that we no, they, nobody has heard the name Boko Haram at that time. But they were manufacturing the bombs. You know the story. They were manufacturing the bombs. And suddenly somebody made mistake. Today, ba, wherever they are gathered, <laughs> Olua, wherever they are gathered, with your name in their mouth, somebody will make a mistake. It will explode in their faces. The guy said, Sit down. He said it exploded. And many of them have died. So they brought them to the hospital. And the doctor said, this one is not accident. We can't treat them until you tell us, go and bring police report. Say which police report? Treat them. They said, so the hospital, University of Meduguri Teaching Hospital, they have Lamisla police station facing the hospital. So they sent People there, go and bring police. So come and see before we start treating. Then they got the ones that were not badly wounded. Who are you people? That's how they found out there's something called Boko Haram. And they arrested these ones that were not badly wounded and took them to police station. And Muhammad Yusuf heard that his people are in Lamisla police station. So he sent people to pull down Lamisla police station. The battle of Boko Haram was never to be against the police or the government. It was to be against the church. But simple praying people shifted the focus of the battle. They now started fighting government. They started blowing down police stations. 
and prison yards. Can I tell you something? When man sits in his place of dominion on the earth, you will control the activities of demons that desire to drink blood. <laughs> Out of the ground, they were all formed. And he brought them. Whatever he named them, God honored it. Husband, let me talk to you. <laughs> Do you know you are responsible for naming the destiny of your family? The male man is the priest over his home. You see, the problem we're having in the body of Christ is that demons, witches, and wizards came and confused scripture and told you, man is plural. He has dominion over the earth, either male or female. But in a home, the male man is the head. And if he calls you a bastard, your father gives you a name, better have a father higher than your father. Because that name will follow you. Okay, let's go to 20. And so Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the birds, to the air, every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. Keep going. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he slept and took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then with the rib which the Lord God had taken from man. Because now he is dividing them. From the male man to the female man. <laughs> For companionship. Because the male man was presented on the earth. Walking around naming all the animals. Eve silently sitting down inside. Then he took his rib. To give him a helper comparable to him. He now took the rib and formed. Amen. Amen. And I shared in this house. In the physical world. Men are created. Women are formed. For any woman to enter into the house of any man. She should be formed. She must go beyond creation. He took the rib and he made a woman and brought her. To who? The man. He didn't bring her to God himself. He brought her to the man. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 24. Or 23. And Adam said. The same way he named all the other things. This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. So shall she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. God didn't call her woman. Go back to 23. God didn't call her woman. Man did. But you all know he added something that was not there. God did not use flesh to make the female or to form her. He used only bone. When he opened up Adam, he removed the bone. He took the flesh and put it back. And with that bone, he used and he formed a woman or a female. And brought her, female, the bone part of a male. Brought her to the man. To see what he will say. And because man has authority. When he said, you are now bone of my bones. And added flesh of my flesh. Women became pursuers of flesh. Everything they look for in a man is flesh related. Knight in shining armor. Tall and dark and handsome. With muscle. Flesh. That a woman doesn't look to the spirit of a man. The woman doesn't look to how he can pray. 
The woman doesn't bother about what her father said and the mother will ask, what are you doing for a living? How do you ask the living what you are doing for a living? They went to the grave to look for Jesus with oil to wash his body. They saw the angel. Say, who are they found? Say, we are looking for Jesus. He said, why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? Flesh, have you seen my husband? Tall, dark, and handsome. That's why he is tall enough to break your head. Is it prayer we will eat? Auntie, it's prayer you will eat. You need a man that will call you the right name. That is in Genesis 1. Fathers, what are you calling your children? <laughs> Husbands, what are you calling your wives? There are women too broken for them to be of use even to themselves because of men. Even God is finding his heart to use the women. Let me tell you, the day that Adam said, flesh of my flesh, Eve's desire was with what anything flesh can bring. So when the serpent came and said, see this thing, she could be tempted. Because flesh was now there. God intended that the flesh would remain in the male. Why? Why? Because the preservation of the flesh is supposed to take its root from the male man. That you can lay your hands on your wife and command death to leave. You can feel the pain of your wife. Because you, you know the Bible said Jesus has been tempted like us. We don't have a high priest who is not touched by the feelings of our infirmity because he wore the same body with us. So it, the expectation was that this man will have flesh in this life that you will understand what the pain of the female is. But he shared it with her. So today you have women taking care of the husbands and the husbands are sitting down at home and they are saying you are the head. You are not the head, you are a complete idiot. Head of what? Head of what? But you see, even though Adam was wrong, God did not erase it. Because the authority was given to him. Even though he didn't name her correctly, God did not erase it. So let's keep reading and see something. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother. Who said this? No. 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 Go back to 23. And Adam said, he's still talking. This is now born of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall become woman because she was taken out of the flesh. He will continue talking. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And they shall become one flesh. God didn't erase it. But the man has never left his father and mother. Instead, he carries the woman to leave her father and mother. That is how, what is happening to the male man. Even if they are the ones that said it, they still won't honor it. <laughs> Me, close your Bible small. Amen. I will love you. I will love you. Forsake all other women. Forsake, Forsake all other women. And cleave to you. And cleave to you. All of the above. All of the above. <laughs> Amen. But adultery is a license for men. It started here. They don't honor oaths they make. I'm not against men if he paying you, hear what God is saying. I've been a pastor for a long time. 
If I counsel 10 cases of adultery, eight, amen. Let me tell you, God is not afraid of the hair on your chest. I am a man. You even bring the woman into the house. And you order your wife. I had, I, I experienced that in Meduguri. A man, 10 years he was dating one, one woman, bringing her into the house. He would sleep with her and instruct his wife to lie down beside the bed and hear them have sex. Ghanaian man. And he said, the woman became, you know, women are now born again, not because they love God. Pl problem is plenty. So they are in church. She ran to pastor. Pastor, and he said, there is no putting us under what God has joined together. See, every marriage was not joined by God. Just because a pastor pronounced it does not mean God pronounced it. You keep the law, God honors it. <laughs> so, amen. Amen. He will sleep with the woman. He will tell his wife, go and bring water. Let us bath. And the pastor told her, stay there. Somebody should try it in the latter house. My husband is bringing a woman to sleep on the bed. And he said, I should sleep here. I said, carry knife when you are sleeping. <laughs> when you hear sound, took from under the bed straight into it. <laughs> Nonsense. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. You carry a human being. Carry a human being. So baby, like this fine girl. Beat her and scatter the face you were giving. Ah! Hey, hey, hey. You don't die, your brother. Amen. Amen. I have counseled women that we are weak by force because the head has been slashed from here to here. When you meet me in my office, I will ask you, do you have brothers with muscle? <laughs> yes. Don't tell them I said so. Go, because they will crucify you as pastor. Find him when he's closing from work. Stop him on the road. Don't beat him. Deck him. Put the same marks on his face that he put on your sister. But the Bible says vengeance is mine. Let's tell God to be, just give us two minutes. <laughs> is it of God that he will join you, husband and wife, to license you to disfigure another person? I'm asking you, the God that died for you, is that how you think he built the altar of marriage? But nobody is bold enough to preach it. My question, she is my biological daughter. She is biological. Outside of her being resident pastor of assistant. Sit down. She is my biological daughter. I didn't adopt her. I went to labor ward. Pain inside here. I shoot this child out. Then one day I met this one. He, from where he says, he says, my son. I ah. Is that your son? I said, yes, it's my son. He, look, he actually looks more like me than Stephanie looks like me. So he, now he came small, small to serve God. Me, I thought he came to serve God. I didn't know that his babies, he saw. So he came, and then when he met me, <laughs> he knelt down in my office. He didn't open mouth. When he knelt down, I said, Bamsha, what did I do to you that you do me like this? I thought you came to serve God. Why do you now want to marry my daughter? He didn't open mouth. He's here. He said, Mommy, as he knelt, God told me this is why he's here. I said, How are we going to do this one now? But then, when it was going to happen, I said, Bamshak, I don't do in law. You are not coming into my house to be an in law. You are coming to be a son. You will partake of inheritance. But the day you raise your hand against Stephanie, 
You will know how connected I am. They will find your body in the Mississippi River. It's not even in Nigeria. I wasn't saying it because I had any inclination he would. Because I knew he was a child of God. If I had the inclination, I would stop it there and then. And they've been married nine years. This year is going to be ten years. I have never said to quarrel. God knows that. Between the two of them. I have never said to quarrel. If there's any settlement of quarrel, it's me quarreling with the two of them. And the two of them quarrel with me. They gang up against me. They say, me, I mean, I don't need any gang. I'm, 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 I'm my own gang. All me, me all by myself and my gang. <laughs> I would just gang up against the two of them. Praise God. I have to survive. <laughs> when you have children that know too much God and too much English, there's something. When they finish, then I'll now shift inside my posture as their senior pastor. When that one doesn't work, I say, I'm your mother. <laughs> Anyone, one of the two will work. Double-edged sword. I'm your pastor and I'm your mother. One of the two will work. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Ten years, and I can tell you this by God. As they remain in God 50 years ahead, Christ tarries, they will still be together. Better than they are right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I tell you the truth. I will never take sides with Stephanie against Bamshak. I take sides with only God. If she's wrong, you are wrong. If you are right, and they, I've never even had any reason to say you are wrong or you're right between the two of them. My only problem is the amount is too much as one. That's the now. You pray some prayers, God answer it. Then you now say, God, you should have answered this small by small. Why are you answering it seriously like that? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Therefore, a man. This one has father. At least he left his father. This is my son. To be joined to his wife. That's the only way marriage survives. Come out from your father and your mother. Any home that has problem, the, husband, the mother of the husband is demon possessed. Mother-in-law is not only one woman. But which mother-in-law caused problems inside marriages? Wife of husband. Uh, sorry. Thank you. You are alive. Please. Do you understand what I'm saying? Can't you change the status quo? Can't you understand that this guy is now your son? And come out this my side, your side. Amen. You too, uncle. I told Joshua, when I was reading this scripture one day to him, I said, you will leave father or mother. Me, this mother, you are, I, we are going inside your marriage together. <laughs> I told him, I said, Who, you bring wife here. Oh, but you know what? I know I'm a child of God. There's no way a woman will marry Joshua or Jesse and cry. Amen. If she will cry, it is to say thank you, father, for Jemima. Because I will spoil her. Pata, pata. But all the girls in Latter House, eyes out. <laughs> My boy is taking. <laughs> 25. Am I wasting your time? The Bible said, and they were both naked. Abutu. The man and his wife. But what is it? They were not ashamed. Now, what happened in Genesis 3 and verse 7? What happened? Give me Genesis 3 verse 7. Or let's start from verse 1, then run down to verse 7, because you understand it better. Now, the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Bamshak, look at what he said to the woman. He said to the woman, has God indeed said to you? You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat. When 
the serpent came, he came to Eve alone. Has God said to you, when Eve answered, she said, we may eat. Why? Because Adam was there. We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. Keep going. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat it, nor touch, nor shall you touch it, lest you die, which you already know wasn't there. Then the serpent, again, said to the woman, Amen? You will not surely die if the woman had eaten and stopped there. Nothing will happen to mankind. Because the authority in that home is in the male man. And these are the only family on earth. If you eat it, you won't die. Verse 5. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Pastor, explain. Give me back verse 5. Pastor explain. The female was created as a helper to the male. The male man on earth is the one who is like God. Priest over his home. So God knew that if you now eat, you will become like the male man. Feminist movement. You won't die. Your eyes will only be open. But were her eyes closed before? Verse 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was not just good for food, but it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make her wise, she took of its fruit and ate. What happened? Nothing. 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 We are talking about reigning in life. Our families will shift and change when men become what God wants them to become. Nothing happened. Then she also gave to her husband who was with her. What did he do? He ate. Verse 7. Then their eyes. The eyes of the both of them were open and they now knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering. But we read in previous scripture that they were naked and they were not ashamed. Now that your eyes are opened by Satan, shame came. The same naked people that were not ashamed now became ashamed because the man partook of the fruit. When you blame women for bringing sin to the world, it's your ignorance of the word. He called her flesh of his flesh. So whatever her eyes saw, she desired. A woman will go and buy 500 shoes. This woman thinks I'm guilty. <laughs> Come and line them up and not have enough leg to go into the shoes. <laughs> Nothing changed in mankind. Eve's eye didn't open more than it was. Everything was the same. But when Adam, who could name the animals and name the art, his dominion was everywhere except on the female. So when the female could influence him, that is what gave birth to Islam. When Adam, Abraham can hear God and take advice from a woman who was still dealing with Egypt. Haggai came into the picture and became a mother. But when God came to Abraham, he said, take me, Isaac, your son, your only son. But Ishmael was 13 years old. 
before Isaac was born. Both of them sons of Abraham. But God will honor only his covenant, not what you borrowed from Egypt. Hmm. Brother, we do traditional marriage. We are wedded. There is nothing like church wedding. Don't worry. If your tribe has thrown in heaven, then we will know. In the Bible, it's only traditional marriage they know. You see, but it's one thing to be ignorant and another thing to vocalize your ignorance. That requires a throne. They'll put you inside and put the crown of foolishness on your head. Amen. 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 What happened in verse 8? Says, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord, the Lord God, among the trees of the garden. Keep going. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? Who did he call? Okay. So he said, I heard, I, 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 I heard your voice in the garden. And I was afraid because Every naked man is naked in his family. When you are naked, your wife is naked. Your children are naked. So what covering are we talking about? We're not talking about I'm a provider, which is what the devil has sold to mankind. Men can abandon every, abjugate every parental role to just provide food and school fees. You are not doing anything that the unbeliever is not doing. In fact, the unbeliever is doing better than you because the unbeliever is making sacrifices on behalf of these children. You don't even go to church. You have no altar. You have no contact with God. So just because you provide food for your family does not mean that your family is covered. They are as naked under hell as anything. So God is taking us through this series. You, we will get to the part of the women. Don't like what you are hearing. We will get to your side. Auntie. We will get to your side. But here is the question. Should you just be a prayer warrior in your house and not bring food? No, sir. Because if you are ruling in the realm of the spirit, the flesh will bow to you. Hmm. You were there in BIEC. When we spoke about mammon, what is it? It's a spirit. Mammon is a god. True? How do you tame him? By spiritual things. Not by labor. Not by toiling. There are people toiling night and day just to provide food. Meanwhile, they need to be able to rule in the spirit and everything that is natural. Let me tell you, I make bold to say every and any family perpetually suffering poverty, the male men in that house don't know their God. <laughs> you can trust and it's it. Amen, I said amen. amen. Uncle, for the period of time of your wilderness journey, your wife can feed you. But if your whole life is a wilderness, she needs to leave you. Let me repeat it. For the period of time of your wilderness journey, your wife needs to do work. But if all your life is a wilderness, Is that the church you people are going to? Yes. <laughs> is that what your pastor is preaching? No, that's what God said. That's what God said. Hallelujah. <laughs> family by family, you can see that any male man who does not know God will err. Any male man Starting from the Adam. 
who succumbed to it, family suffered. The whole mankind. She is the mother of the living, Eve. But who is the father of the living? It's Adam. Who are you named after? Your father. So if your father has invited sin, Adam, that's what it, why it's called the Adamic nature, not Eve nature. Jesus had to come as a second Adam, not a second Eve. To correct the error of the first Adam. Nobody is bringing Eve inside this conversation. That's why, even though he came to Mary, and he cannot be from the semen of the Adamic man, if he came from the semen of Adam, he cannot deliver the world. So he came as God, but entered into the body of a female to be legal on earth. And when he came, glory be to God, he changed the status quo. He became the second Adam. So that mankind will go back to not being ashamed. Because now we have a genuine, that's why Ephesians says, Bamsha, he say, this marriage is like Christ and the church. He said, the man should love his wife and give himself up the way Christ. So Christ now became the example, not Adam. Because he came and erased. You don't understand. From the day Christ came, behind all the way to Adam, every error was corrected. By the appearance of the Son of God who is also called the son of man. So in the book of Matthew, when his genealogy is written, it's written after Joseph. Do you want us to see it? Let's read it, then I will sit down. Matthew chapter 1. Quick, quick, we will run it. Who is being blessed this morning? Quick, quick, we will run it. Matthew 1. Matthew 1 from verse 1. The book of the genealogy of who are we talking about? Jesus who? The son of who? Who is David? A man. A man. The son of Abraham. Keep going. Abraham begat Isaac. Isaac begat Jacob. Jacob begat Judah and his brothers. <laughs> Judah begat Perez. Perez begat Zerah by Tamar. When God, you see, for, for what he will do to the church, he will bring in a female. Amen. Because the female, every female in the Bible is a type of the church. So, for the church to know that you can be a prostitute, but you can still be in the genealogy. He said, now, this Judah was begot by Perez and Zerah by Tamar. He had to include Tamar. Not because of anything else, but because you have to get to the place where you know, I'm this bad, but I can belong. Okay. So it says, Perez begat Hezron, and Hezron begat Ram. Keep going. Ram begat Aminadab. Aminadab begat Nashon. Nashon begat Salmon. Salmon begat Boaz by Rehab. Who is Rehab? Time time raped by her brother. Rahab prostitute. Type of the church. Boaz begat Obed. By root, Obed begat Jesse. Keep going. And Jesse begat David the king. David the king begat Solomon. Who is Solomon? The daughter that this way, you know now. By her, who has been? Amen. You married 300 men. You come to Jesus, he will still love you. We are not just talking about physical marriage. We are talking about service to demons and deities. It doesn't matter how many idols your family has served. Whatever it is that they are coming from, when you come to Christ, you get accepted. David begat Solomon by her who had been the wife of Agbamodia. What did you call the God? Solomon begat Rehoboam. Rehoboam begat Abijah. And Abijah begat Asa. Keep going. Asa begat Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat begat Joram. And Joram begat Uzziah. Keep going. Uzziah begat Jotam. Jotam begat Ahaz. And Ahaz begat Ezekiah. 
Hezekiah begat Manasseh, Manasseh begat Amnon, and Ammon begat Josiah. If we stop on these tribes, you will understand certain things. Josiah begat Jeconiah and his brothers. About the time they were carried away to Babylon, keep going. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconiah begat Sheltiel, and Sheltiel begat Zerubbabel. Oh Lord, oh Lord, this name Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel begat Abiud, Abiud begat Eliakim, and Eliakim begat who? Azo. Amen. Azo begat Zadok, Zadok begat Atim, Atim begat, begat when he's una Elud, Elud, <laughs> begat Eliezer, Eliezer begat Matan, Matan begat Jacob, keep going, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus Christ, or Jesus who is called Christ. Do you understand? that the genealogy is traced to the male man so that Jesus here will be legal to be the second Adam. So, Pastor, what are you saying to us this morning before Tuesday? Husband, what are you calling your family? What are you calling your children? What name do you name them every day? How many names do you know in scripture that you need to prophesy over your family? Do you know how to make decrees? Do you know how to open your mouth and, and speak things that will turn into words and turn into tangible things? Do you know how to say? Jesus didn't come to tell Mary, I want to enter your womb. The devil came to talk to Eve. Jesus sent angel, tell her I'm coming. How can this thing be, seeing that I don't know a man? They didn't say, do you want? Say, Holy Ghost is coming upon you. That which you will carry is not your own. It's going to be the son of God. And by this time, too, Elizabeth man is even pregnant. So find the Elizabeth that can carry your pregnancy without knowing very well Joseph is not the father. But let me tell you something about Joseph. The Bible recorded that when he found out that Mary was pregnant, he said it, he would put her out of his house or annul the marriage quietly. There are so many men destroying the destinies of their wives, but they are doing it secretly. That is another spirit of Joseph. God has called me to start selling sweets. No, you can't. I don't feel like it. In the room, she comes to church. Whatever is the music, she can't sing. You have killed her inside the room. So when Joseph made that decision in his heart, an angel showed up, say, Uncle, mind yourself. If it was a worry angel, he will say, you go carry him. In fact, she not go born for hospital. Now you go do midwife. <laughs> you go cut umbilical cord. See yourself. God give person in belly. You can't they ask. <laughs> what is your own? Joseph didn't need to know whether God was familiar with doing it like that. He only needed to know an angel has spoken. There are times angels will come with a smile. There are some angels when you see them, they are frowning. Anytime Michael shows up, trouble has already started. Gabriel only comes to announce. Trouble will come. When you don't hear, then you send Michael. But bless God, Joseph arranged himself when he heard. He went ahead, married, carried her to Bethlehem, looked for stable when they said there's no place. And that is the role of a man. Your wife is carrying something bigger than you that was put in her by God. You midwife it and silence yourself. Keep quiet and honor her pregnancy. And give birth to this child. Raise him. Put your name on the child. Train the child. The world says there is no room for her to give birth. You create the room for your wife's vision. But what do we have today? The wife is ready to push and the husband stamps the baby when it comes out. When Herod got up to kill the baby, God didn't speak to Mary. He spoke to Joseph. Because the protection of the baby, every vision should be in the hand of the male. He said, take my child out of Egypt. 
protect this child until it is time for this child to grow. What do you think God will say to you, man who has stood in the way of his wife's vision? What do you think God will tell you? You husband responsible for the depression of your wife. He's your mate. He's afraid of you. Don't worry. Kill her vision and see what will happen. The day you will stand before him, he will pieces you. Nobody can defend you. Advocate is only for believers. I hope you know. Holy Spirit does not advocate for unbelievers. He advocates only for believers. So when God is the judge, Holy Spirit, you don't have... This. See, the Satan that is advising men to terminate women's destinies and the destinies of their children will not stand in judgment day to bring case on your behalf. He is not allowed. In heaven, there's only one advocate, one judge, and one intercessor. And they all align for the righteous. So arrange yourself before you face him. Bow your heads.